Hey guys, what is up? Mage here, doing another World of Tanks console review. Hey guys, we're going to do something rather unique here on my channel. I'm actually going to review a premium tank. I've been saying I wanted to do a review for this machine for a while, and I just haven't gotten around to it. Well, now I'm getting around to it. This is the uh, Tier 6 uh, premium German tank destroyer, the Dicker Max. And FYI, I am actually going to split this video up into two parts. So... This part here, the first part, will be the walkthrough, and then the second part will actually be two gameplays uh, put together. So, um, we'll go ahead and uh, get straight on into this machine as fast as we can. Um, there is no grind, there is no packages, none of that stuff. That's the benefit of a premium tank. Uh, your engine will be 272 horsepower. Your gun will be a 105 millimeter gun. Uh, your rate of fire will be 6.45 rounds a minute. Penetration will be 169 millimeters, and your penetration for premium rounds will be 227 millimeters, and your average alpha damage will be 300. Aiming time will be 2.29 seconds, and your accuracy will be 0.36. Your track traverse will be 35, and your uh, traverse speed uh, for your gun will be 26. View range will be 400, and your uh, signal range will be 620. Um. How would, how, how would I suggest somebody to play this machine? Uh, play at long range, definitely. I don't have the exact numbers off the top of my head. I will put it in annotations before I post this video. Um, but the gun traverse arc is not very much. It's about like this. You know, you can turn that gun no more than that. And the way you would, you, you would look at that and say, well, how the hell do you deal with that? Because this was the first tank destroyer I ever learned to play in. Um... The first thing I learned rather quickly, uh, aside the fact that this thing has paper mache for armor, um, is the best way to remedy a, a short gun traverse arc or a narrow gun traverse arc on a machine like this um, would be the further back you sit from your targets, the less that narrow traverse arc is, the less of an issue it is going to be for you. Because you can see, as uh, close as I am to that prop uh, T 3485, you know, a slight little movement to the left or right, and he could throw my gun off completely, and then I gotta go and actually traverse the entire hull to hit the target, and that's where the soft stats on this gun go through the goddamn roof, in which case, if you have to be moving the hull, things are going wrong, you know, you, your gun is needed, is needed all over the map in those cases, in which case your team is failing you. Um, but uh, as long as you're not moving the hull often on this machine, it's perfectly fine. It's okay to traverse that gun, um, but when you have to move that hull, it gets a little frustrating. Um, the gun depression on this thing, that's something to talk about. Um, as, uh, as you can see, the very front of that, um, where the tracks are, you can depress that gun all the way down there. And it probably could depress even more if the uh, if that front hull was not in the way. It is ridiculous. You're talking about gun depression on a German tank that makes a British or American tank blush with envy. Um, it is ridiculous, the, the gun depression you can get on this thing. And I would... Um, it gives you flexibility in how you can engage targets. That doesn't mean go up and fight people up close. Um, I am going to show in one of my gameplay videos um, an example of how I was able, to, how I'm able to get away with it. And a lot of times people don't expect this gun to depress so darn well, um, but it's a shocker for a lot of people when they see it get depressed. Um, for those that are intending to buy this machine, you may want to see, you know, what can you do to defeat these machines? Well, there's not a whole lot to defeat in them, because, looking at the armor profile here, you have 50 millimeters from the front, 20 in the side, and in the back. This thing is not well armored, believe me. Uh, most guns are going to go through this machine with no trouble. Something to note and something you have to keep in mind. Uh, the gun mantlet here, if you want to call it that, the that huge hunk of metal you see surrounding the very base of the gun, um, I have gotten a few bounces from that on a few occasions. Now, I have no idea if somebody has, you know, shot at this machine or shot at a few of these machines before and has the impression, oh, I can just shoot through anything, um, and they just aim directly into it. That's a possibility, and they don't realize it's kind of troll at times. Um, the other possibility, and like I said, I'm very surprised I can get a bounce here and there, and the only thing I can think of is people are hitting that gun mantlet. 
I would not recommend relying on armor. This thing is not well armored at all. Um, the only thing I can assume from those balances is somebody's probably aiming at the uh, crew compartment behind the gun mantlet, and RNG just trolled him, and the shot went right directly into the gun mantlet at a weird angle. That's the only thing I can assume. Uh, otherwise, if you have a derp gun, you want to hit this thing right in the crew compartment into the side or directly into the rear. And, of course, if you're a scumbag arty player, yeah, just thump it and you'll get a good laugh out of it because it's going to go up in flames. Um, not a whole lot going for this machine in terms of armor. The gun, on the other hand, .36 accuracy is pretty darn workable and is not bad when you compare it to other Tier Six uh, tank destroyers. The Alpha, I think, is what surprises people. Uh, 300 and average, uh, average uh, Alpha. Let me double check again. Yes, 300 average Alpha. 300 average Alpha. I mean, that is serious work. And the thing you have to keep in mind about that, about that Alpha damage, is um, this is not a howitzer. This is not a derp gun. This is a proper 105 millimeter high velocity gun. This thing fires standard armor piercing ammo. When it hits you, it fucking hurts. Um, if I was to make a proper comparison uh, of this 105 to another um, to two German tank guns, it would be that this machine has it basically packs more alpha damage than the L56, the short 88. That's uh, a gun you can you have the option of equipping on the Jagdpanzer IV. Uh, another German tank destroyer at tier 6. You have the option of equipping the short 88, or you can run the 75mm L70, which is what I prefer to ran. And you have more penetration, and you have more alpha damage than the short 88, but you don't have quite the penetration of the L70. Um, this is basically a hard-hitting gun. I, I would say, if you like the short 88, this might be right up your alley. Uh, you're not going to be able to beat this thing. Um, you're not going to be able to beat a Jagdpanzer IV in a uh, rate of fire contest. It's just going to slap the hell out of you, especially with that 75 uh, millimeter gun. And uh, obviously, you're going to want to sit back long range. And that's basically what this machine is. It is a um, it's a long range uh, assassin. That's the best way I can describe it. You basically pick on um, tanks with full health or most majority of their health obviously still intact, and you basically rebalance them with this gun. Um, this is as close as you could get to running a Tier 7 heavy tank uh, gun on a Tier 6 tank destroyer. That's basically what this machine is, and it basically can punch right through most tanks at Tier 6. Um, you are going to start having trouble when you run up on Tier 7 tanks and, of course, Tier 8. Uh, which I might add, this machine does not get um, premium matchmaking. So, um, you may want to run some premium ammo. I know I have just 26 rounds of uh, armor piercing. Um, I, have, I just went ahead and stocked it completely with 26 rounds of armor piercing. Mostly because you have to figure it's two up, two down. You're rarely going to see tier 8. I mean, you'll see them. Don't get me wrong. You are going to see tier 8 machines. Um, but how often are you going to be able to do anything against them? Is the way I look at it. You could run the premium rounds. And you should be able to punch through most things at tier 8. And you'll be just fine. Um, so that's up to you. I personally, most of the time when I play this machine. I get tier 6 and 7 matches. So... I'm not all that worried about the the games I'm going to get in this machine. And if I do get a Tier 8 match, uh, chances are I'm not going to do much anyways, unless I get a, a bunch of idiots on the enemy team, in which case then I can just thump the hell out of them. Um, one thing to talk about on this machine, um, if you're going to uh, use this machine as a crew trainer like I have, uh, first skill I would recommend outright is Six Sense. I had a tough go with this machine, and I think the only reason I did as well, I've done as well in this machine as I've had um, done, is probably because I'm an experienced player. I, I know when I probably have been spotted and when I haven't. That's even without six cents being used. But uh, if you are an average to below average player, I recommend that outright. You're going to want six cents on this crew as fast as possible. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and switch to some gameplay. Catch you guys back uh, for the next video.